I don't even want to start this. I'm going to start a little bit something like this. Hello Internet, I am Dylan, this is Quinn. Today we're back here with another episode of EGT. We've got a ton of news, and by a ton I mean like, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 pounds? All the news. All of the news. Now, uh, we're not joined here by our good friend The Resurrected. He's off searching for the American Dream. So let's go ahead and start without him. I guess. Absolutely. Might be a Absolutely. while. Absolutely. Might be a while before he gets back. Maybe. Uh, I guess I'll let you go ahead and start the show. So, a TV version of Breath of the Wild uh, called Breath of the Nets was just taken down by Nintendo. Never seen that happen before. Maybe it's a glitch. But seriously, if you take a Nintendo, if you make a Nintendo fan game these days, you're just asking for trouble. If they had finished the game before they posted it, maybe we'd be able to play a complete version of it. But because because when something is on the internet, it tends to stay there. The creator of the game, Winter Drake, did, however, uh, did vow, however, that the project would be back and bigger and better than ever. And speaking of ever, we may be getting another Mega Man Legacy collection. It would seem that it's been rated in Korea. Not sure how you rate a game before it's announced. But that's just me. The rating for PS4, the rating is for PS4, Xbox, and PC. And the collection will supposedly include Mega Man 7 through Mega Man 10. Seems legit. But like, why a rating that's never gonna stop being weird? In other words, quit is a fat cut. I didn't write that. Who wrote that? I'll kill him! Get the crowbar. I don't have a crowbar. I said, get the fucking crowbar! Never mind, I'll take care of it later. So, uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson is making a Rampage movie. Pretty excited about that. I grew up with that game on, uh, the Sega Master System. Sure enough, everybody owned the Sega Master System. Anyway, uh, it's gonna be a little different this time. Uh, apparently the monsters aren't just destroying the city just because. Uh, they're trying to find the people who turn them into monsters. And also, instead of starting as humans, they started as animals. Which is a thing, I guess. Works for me, why not? Our last rumor comes from, uh, everyone's favorite game, Call of Duty. I know it's taking up so much space in our show for such a shitty game, but what can you do? The news is the news. It turns out, COD 4, the fourth COD game, that's four too many if you ask me, is finally getting its own release separate of Infinite Warfare. Now, I don't know about you, but I may actually pick it up for like 10 bucks, but we know how Activision is, who's going to release it for another 60, because fuck them. They did it with Black Ops 2, why wouldn't they do it with this? But speaking <laughs> more Call of Duty, we've got another story, which is Zombies Chronicles. We talked about the rumor last week, and, uh, well, it turned out all it took was a week for it to become a thing. Now, I know the COD community is going to be super interested in this with, uh, eight maps, I think? I don't know. I would just do my job a little bit better. Uh, yeah, eight maps. Thanks. There's going to be stuff from Black Ops. There's going to be stuff from Black Ops 2, as long as that one, it's the one map. It's one map. It's Origins. That's the only map that Black Ops 2 gets. Not Mob of the Dead. No, no, don't include a good map in your game, you fucking c And that brings us to DLC Watch, which is pretty interesting this week. We're going to go ahead and start it off with uh, Breath of the Wild's first DLC pack. I should remind you that there's going to be two, because <laughs> this sounds like a whole list of the whole season pass. Now, this one's going to have something, I think it's called a Traveler's Medallion, in which case you can use it on the map to make a fast travel point which will be really helpful for traveling across Hyrule because it takes a minute to move from one place to another. Now on top of that Nintendo's bringing out a horde mode so that you can use it to power up your master sword which I haven't gotten yet because I've been playing that game really slow but I think uh, I think I will very much appreciate having it. On top of that you also get stuff like uh, uh, Minna's helmet you get the phantom armor, there's Majora's Mask, which I'm very interested in getting my hands on, and 
uh, hard mode, which most people say should have been in the game in the first place, but, you know, uh, Nintendo isn't all-powerful. Hard mode has enemies that are powered up by one point, meaning red bokoblins will be blue bokoblins, which is going to make it a bit harder. Well, yeah, there's also enemies that are in the fucking sky. God, I hope they don't have bombs or anything. That would be terrible. Now, this is only half of the DLC. The other half is coming out in winter, and it features some story stuff. But uh, you'd think that this would be the whole DLC, the whole season pass, which is only $20. Seems pretty good deal for what you're getting. Looking at you, Activision. Those... Those are the spoiler alert alarm system. You have been warned. Dead Rising 4 spoilers are ahead. Now, I don't know about you, I liked Dead Rising 4. I know it had a rocky release, but it was pretty fun. I really enjoyed going through and slaughtering the zombies. And one of the things I liked most about it, even though it left me a little uh, shooken up at the end, was Frank West's death. But it's a shame that he had to die to have such an interesting DLC pop up which is Frank Rising. It came out a while back, but I feel like it deserves a mention. Uh, you play as Frank West, now zombified, with your zombie powers, being able to do whatever you can to not be a zombie anymore, because you're a little bit smarter than the rest of those zombies. This brings back timer-based missions, which are a bit of a pain, and probably going to make me want to blow my fucking brains out, because uh, that was one of my least favorite things about the Dead Rising series originally. However, this should hold you over until the next DLC release, which is Super Ultra Dead Rising 4 Mini Golf. Seriously, Mini Golf? This has got to be a joke, right? No? God, never change, Capcom. Never change. Alright, <clears throat> so listen up. Uh, Primal for the PS2 is going to be a PS4 release. And the thing about Primal, and you didn't hear this from me, the thing about Primal is that the presentation is amazing, Well, the best thing about it is that the gameplay is absolute garbage. So good luck. As for me, I'm going to suggest Superman 64. It has rings and pain. Go fuck yourself. Welcome back to Indie Showcase, where we're going to tell you about all the new indie hits. The first one is Peto Box. Peto in Spanish is duck. This game is called Duck Box. It's about a duck that boxes. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. Now, the fighting is a little bit punch out, the art style is a little bit noir, and you're a goddamn swole duck that's boxing. Go buy it. It's linked down below. It's the Kickstarter. The demo's free. It's five bucks. Just do it. Just do it. Now, in, in non-swole duck-related games, there's another one called Strafe. I'm a huge fan of 90s shooters. Uh, Doom, Wolfenstein, Quake. Uh, they were some of my favorite games. But uh, nothing's better than seeing people attempt to create the badassery of that era in indie games. Most people can't do it and it's kind of funny to see them fail. Some people end up can do it and Strafe is one of those. Now you can pick this up on uh, May 9th for $19.96 and it is the best bloodiest gore fest I have ever seen. You need this. You need this in your life. Down below it's linked to the Steam page. Go buy it, or else I'm going to find you, and I'm going to beat you with a bat. Scratch that last part. <laughs> Back over here at the main news, I thought I was going to have something super awesome to tell you, but we only really got a trailer. If you haven't heard of Code Vein Bloodlust yet, you are about to be... Oh man, the game looks great. Now, it's got a very Dark souls -y vibe. If you don't like Dark Souls, you're going to want to avoid this game. I won't blame you. Uh, it's a hard game, but this game looks like Dark Souls. It's something to do with like vampires. 
I think. We haven't gotten a full release yet out. I'm just super excited and I wanted to tell other people about it. So, get up, get ready, go buy a PS4. It may be coming to PC, but all I've seen for it so far is a PS4 release. We're going to have to wait till E3 until we have the news for that. Unless something hits you in the head causing cranial damage, you probably remember us mentioning a small little game by uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe last week. The game sold 459,000 copies, making it the biggest release in uh, the Mario Kart series, surpassing Mario Kart Wii for uh, 433,900 copies. And that's quite a bit because uh, that means Nintendo earned like 27 and a half million dollars just off of Mario Kart. That's not even counting the Switch stuff. The Switch is going to be a great system. But uh, not everyone's profits have been up lately. Isn't that right, Quinn? Call of Duty World War II is a game that people want to see content for. It's new, it's popular, it's a rainbow color chupacabra. There's a problem though. Nobody is making money off of Call of Duty World War II related content. This of course is part of a larger issue of demarketization based on content. Monetization based on content. Well, that's all stuff that you can hear from anybody. Seems like everyone has something to say about it. They seem dodgy about it too, which makes sense. When you look at how easily a video game, a video can become demonetized. I mean, none of us in the gamers Doom channel ever fucking curse, and yet our revenue has dropped steeply from 0.13 to 0.01. I've had to get a second job, but that's fine. I was doing pretty good with my one quadrillionth of a penny, and now look at me! Now look at me! You did this to me! It's fine. I'm okay. Who took my pen? Guess we're gonna move on to coming soon. Uh, looks like a uh, Minecraft is coming to the Switch. I guess that doesn't mean I'm gonna have to be buying it for the hundredth time or something. I mean, seriously. At least I don't want to have to be stuck with a mobile port when I'm weaving through traffic. Speaking of gaming on the go, we've got the Nintendo 2DS XL was just announced, which fixes the biggest problem I had with the 2DS, which is we can now fold the screen. It'll make it portable. Fucking gonna be great. And the price of $150 means that you can play any 3DS game you want cheaper than anything else, like, uh, May Fire Emblem, Shadows of Valencia, which is a remake of the second Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem Gaiden. And it has a, a, a $45 season pass. Holy fucking shit. Is that right? Wow. Uh, I guess you're going to be getting a lot of content. We know Nintendo delivers. But maybe you don't want to play a strategy game on a Nintendo system. Well, Reservoir Dogs Bloody Days has you covered. That's is going to let you control each one of the characters at once to pull off the biggest heist of your life. It sounds like too much work, I hear you complain. Well, are you going to bark all day, little doggy? Or are you going to bite? Now, in movie news, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Volume 2, coming out today. You will find me at the movie theater. I can't, can't resist going to see little baby Groot and movie theater popcorn. Actually, it's just the popcorn. <clears throat> I'm back. So, uh, that's all I got for uh, this week. Uh, join us uh, next week when we go camel hunting.